So the editing team here asked me for something very specific. They want the fastest machine that I can build for exporting videos. And they want it in the server room so that they can just remote into it and export their projects directly from Premiere instead of going from Premiere to Cineform and then having a separate machine take it to H.264. So I kind of went, okay, only one small problem. With petabyte project coming, space in our rack is at something of a premium. And if you want the fastest machine I can build, I want to overclock it. But I've only got two U's to do it. So what's the solution? Water cooling. TunnelBear is the simple VPN app that makes it easy to browse privately and enjoy a more open internet. To try TunnelBear for free, check out the link in the video description. So believe it or not, uh, water cooling servers is actually a pretty common thing. But as with anything that we do around here, there's a right way to do it and there's a wrong way to do it. So the right way to water cool a server is to buy a server or usually server solution that is designed to be water cooled. So typically that'll be servers that plug in with quick disconnect fittings to a, a cabinet or even an entire room or building that has giant heat dissipation units located on the outside. The wrong way to do it, as the uh, regular viewers have probably already figured out is the way that we're going to go about this is to just grab an off-the-shelf server and uh, jury rig some liquid cooling into it. Ah, come on out, you bastard. Okay. So let's meet our victim then, shall we? Ah, I actually threw this box together during our server maintenance weekend. Yesterday and the day before and the day before that it was a it was a long weekend Just to make sure that it was all working before I went and water cooled it So in here we've got an Asus X99 Deluxe 2 We've got a Core i7 6950X Extreme Edition 10 core We've got a Noctua cooler that's clearly gotta go I mean I love Noctua but not going to be suitable for that CPU. We've got uh, 32 gigs of Corsair Dominator Platinum painted orange RAM. We've actually got a GTX 980 in here. That's about all we need for video acceleration. And then I wasn't sure what to do on the boot drive. I actually have a PCI Express SSD down there just to see if it was going to work in that second slot. But I think we're going to go with these two guys in RAID 1. Yes, I know they're refurbished. Yes, I know they're old, but it's RAID 1. It should be okay. So now I need some water cooling gear. Normally I would reach out to all the usual suspects and get them to send over some cool stuff, but uh, this project was not planned out at all. So what I'm stuck with is just kind of going through the shelves here and seeing what I can find. Some of this is what I would have used anyway, like uh, Primo Chill Advanced LRT tubing. I found some in red. Uh, but some of this stuff is a very random mishmash of what I had on the water cooling shelf. So here's um, a D5 pump with a top from EK that was from a previous project. Here's a, a Phobia reservoir that's just the smallest tube reservoir that I have on hand. Here's an old Alpha Cool Rad that I found. And finally, this is an interesting story. I take pride in completing the sponsored projects that I ask for hardware for. And over two years ago, I asked BitsPower for a very specific set of fittings for a water-cooled BitPhoenix Prodigy build. And I never delivered it for a number of reasons, and so I've just kind of shamefully looked at these every time I've gone through the fittings box, having not really any use for all these like 45s and right angles that only had two straight fittings in it. But that all changes today, because I finally have a project that I can use them for. So stage one is to kind of tear everything out that I already had in there and have a look at the space we're working with. This was actually our old router case. And as you can see, there is a lot of wasted space for like five and a quarter inch drive bays. 
these fans that are just kind of hanging out in the middle of nowhere. We're still going to need intake fans, but a lot of this space could be utilized for something else. But I still have some concerns. So we've got an EK Supremacy Evo block. I'm using the all metal version. We don't want to take any unnecessary risks with leaks since this will actually be sitting above Petabyte Project. And I just wanted to make sure that it's actually going to fit in the 2U height with our 90 degree fitting. So that's good. Then, same thing, metal caps for the end of our tube reservoir. I need to find somewhere to put that, which looks like it's gonna be right about here. And then I need somewhere to put my radiator. And it looks like we've got a small clearance issue there, but nothing we can't resolve. So this is great. Everything came out really easily, giving us actually more space. What we're going to do is actually sub in a triple radiator where I had intended to use a dual radiator. Now, the mounting, though, is going to be a little bit tricky. We're actually going to raise it a little bit off the bottom of the case. Then we're going to have the fans blowing up this way and we're gonna have these three fans carrying the air through the case as a whole. Bear in mind, guys, this is a triple radiator and we don't have enough room to cool the video card anyway, so it's only responsible for cooling the CPU. So there are a couple of things you're gonna notice me doing about this build that would be a little bit different than normal. Uh, number one is I'm gonna be using everywhere that I can, so on the radiator, on the CPU block and on the reservoir actually, I'm gonna be using vice grips to tighten up these knurled fittings like this because I cannot risk a leak. And as long as we are screwing into metal, there's no danger other than to the finish on the knurled fittings. The other thing you're gonna notice is that I'm gonna be optimizing for the shortest possible tubing runs wherever I can because no matter how good your tubing is, it will be slightly porous and that's where water evaporates from a water cooling system. So I'm gonna have as little of that exposed as possible. Now I'm getting really excited. I think I finally got a pretty solid plan for how this is gonna to come together. So I need some kind of riser for this reservoir to make sure that it is high enough that the pump's inlet is going to be easily fed by it. Then that conveniently gets me right up to the same level as this right angle coming off the radiator that will go back into the res. Very cool stuff. Then the CPU is easy. This tube looks like it's just gonna fit under the graphics card. And this one comes right over here, giving me a total of only about like two feet and change of exposed tubing. Mounting everything to the bottom of the case is extremely important and needs to be very precise. If I screw up the placement just a little bit for the radiator, the pump, and the reservoir, they aren't all going to fit. The other thing that's gonna be really tricky down here is the fact that this is a rack-mounted case. So I can't just have like the head of a screw sticking through here. It'll bump on the next one down. So what I've got are these sunken type screws here. And the plan is to use what is not a proper bit for metal, but I only need a few holes out of it. But I'm gonna use one of these uh, stepped style drill bits to see if I can create a countersunk hole as, as best as I can. Yes, I know it's not 100% the best way to do it, but <laughs> come on, you're watching my objectives. We're gonna pre-drill a hole in the rad to tap into. Oh, shit. went too far, hit the tube. Well, I am not sure if I could be more pissed off right now. So the bad news is that we punctured the radiator and I don't have another one of the same. But the good news is that that hole that I was drilling, these screws thread in and kind of self tap perfectly. Nice, solid connection. The plan would have worked perfectly if I had just put something back. I thought I could control it, but it slipped. So 
So I have to fix this now, which means the best solution we have on hand is marine epoxy. Claims to bond brass, so I have mixed it thoroughly for one minute. I have actually done this before with JB Weld. That radiator continued to work for years, but I've never tried using epoxy, so here we go. This is how you can tell the difference in my videos between a problem and a problem. That will go there for a bit. Let's get the pump and res mounted. We now return to you live from problems Linus was expecting to have to solve. Okay, so when we try and close the lid, we're gonna see that there's a bit of a, a bit of a bulge, so to speak. I can't have even that little bit of play. It's only about this much. Fortunately, this mount for the pump has a little bit of unnecessary thickness at the bottom that I think we can just remove. Oh, we bought the sticky kind when we need the Velcro kind. No problem, this is just a finer grit than I had wanted to use. It'll just take a little bit longer. I should have just mounted the radiator with double-sided tape. Why did I screw through it? Anyway, cart before the horse, let's find out if it fits. Perfect, no bulge whatsoever. All right, I was bound to be successful at something. Not having a good day today, it's okay. I always pull it off, usually. Oh man, did you see those scissors bend? Always pull back before trying to insert. Yep, I am never too mad to make a dick joke. Maybe we should just call this video Problems Linus Could Solve Easily if he had enough time to wait around for a 3D print job. I need spacers. I need spacers for my screws. So I found this old acrylic CPU block hold down and I am cutting it up to get holes. These may be the jankiest spacers of all time. Oh shoot. Just call this video Linus being grumpy for 20 minutes. So as long as everything stays in place exactly perfectly. Okay. Oh, oh sh The radiator is in. Making real progress now. We're getting close. Here we are again. A 3D printed mount would be a perfect solution for our reservoir, but uh, no time, so it came to me. Minecraft. Boom, brick. Boom, another brick. Oh yes. Wait, is that too high? Ah, oh, back to the drawing board. Damn Minecraft. We'll use this square hockey puck. Okay, not my straightest cut. We have a big problem. We are like done. It's time to power it up. And this, this is how set our epoxy is. Clearly that's not enough, but possibly Fractal designed to the rescue. Fractal has removable fittings from the components of their AIO. But what I don't know yet <clears throat> is if they're using G1 quarter threads. If they are, then I can just swap this radiator in. It is, it is right. It's right. We have another rad. Love tap, love tap. Now I'm having fun. Okay. Oh, could that have been any easier? Oh, yes. In there just fine. We've got our tubing run, all our fittings are tightened. So all that's left to do is throw in our network card, throw in our graphics card. Wait, what? 
Is this really gonna interfere with this? Oh, come on now. You vicious bastard. Okay, well, this computer doesn't get 10 gigabit networking. SSDs and a one. Tape it down and a two. Tape it on top of the other one. Power for the SSDs. One Molex connector over here. 24 pin power. Oh, we're close now, baby. We gotta make sure everything here is nice and flat because this graphic card does not have a lot of clearance here. In you go. Okay, <laughs> that is a primo rat's nest right there. Moment of truth. Okay, so this is it. It's finally done. The pump was dead to replace that. Anyway, the project is a success. So our hottest core, after about 20 minutes of sitting running small FFTs in Ida 64 is 60 degrees, which is pretty darn impressive given how low profile this sucker is. What a project. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. If you just liked this video, do that. If you liked it though, hit the like button, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store and our community forum which you should join. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next. So click the video and go watch another one of our videos. I can't guarantee they'll be as epic as this one, but they'll be good.